One. Hello, my name is Gabriel Olson. I'm with uh, Festival Voice, and I'm here with the members of STS9, Jeffrey, Alana, Hunter, and Zach. Uh, can you guys tell me what, a little bit of what you guys been up to lately? Well, we've been super excited to be playing concerts. All right. It's been a, a nice, uh, refreshing change over the last few years, and um, been... Um, Working diligently on finishing a studio album, and and keeps us keeps us busy enough right there. Those those things. All right. So, uh, to help the audience uh, know you, for those who don't know who you are, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your past and uh, like what you've done and your a little bit of your history? Yeah, um, that's <laughs> that's a tough one. We we've been a lot. Yeah, you know, we've been around for um a while now and so uh it's hard to kind of pick out certain little things but we you know we started in atlanta about 20 years ago uh, mm -hmm. we've been on the west coast um in the bay area for um almost that long now um and uh you know we uh, all instrumental band um mm -hmm. but we um have just uh, I guess an eclectic amount of influences and that is you know, we've kind of reflected that in people that we've shared the stage with you know we've opened from with uh for everyone from you know James Brown to Jay-Z um and we have played with just so many uh, bands that we grew up loving and and um you know and so I, I think we've just we're still here we're still you know just feel just grateful and privileged to continue to be making music together and um, we, we feel like we're better than ever um, and kind of finally getting to this place that we've been working so hard to get to musically and creatively and so we're having um, just like it's having the time of our lives playing music uh, actually you know right now I guess that's how I would do it. Okay uh, so can can you tell me a little bit so you told me you're from Atlanta and you're currently in the Pacific Northwest uh, you guys been performing music for about 20 years uh, so, so, uh, so you've told us a little bit about your past and what brought, and what brought you up to this point. Uh, were there any defining moments for any of you that, uh, majorly impacted you as a person or as a musician? I mean, yes, continually. Um, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of memories in there to tap into, but I think just the experience of of living and, and creating with these wonderful people for so long has, has profoundly influenced and changed my life. I mean, um, so that, that would be my answer. Okay. Um, so earlier you talked a little bit about working with uh, some of the people you've been fans of for uh, your entire lives. Uh, uh, what are some of your experiences with your own fans, some of your favorite ones? Oh, I mean, our fans are just amazing. Like, we, we feel really privileged to have such dedicated fans that travel from all over to see our concerts. And I think, like, one of the things that, you know, that we love about what we do is just the circle of inspiration. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it feels like, we're putting something out there and the fans are giving it back to us all the time. So they, I mean, the art that they make, you know, uh, is always means a lot to us. They, they give us art all the time. So yeah, just that circle of inspiration is really, is really what we're after. Okay. And speaking of fan art, is there any piece that is the most memorable for you guys that you've received? It'd be hard to say the most memorable, honestly, because it's just, it really is vast. Like a lot, I mean, um, we, we have everything from stained glass windows to, I uh, just so many things. Um, I would say like one of the recent things that comes to mind is is a, uh, like a, a book that, that fans made us of just all these different memories and pieces of art within the book. And uh, it was just a really personal and, and beautiful gesture. Wow. That that sounds really really touching i'm not gonna lie uh you know with 
fans like we've seen how crazy they can get at the shows uh when they get to meet one of you guys or even if they just get close up to stage what has been your most memorable interaction with a fan and maybe a time that they got a little too overzealous tell them about the time zach <laughs> yeah that's that's that yeah, <laughs> I mean, we've had lots of crazy incidents happen and stuff, but I, I think, you know, not to be too esoteric in this response, but I think, you know, the gift of their attention and how much they love music and listen and, and the feedback and response that, that we get, the you know, Lana speaking to that loop of the giving and receiving um, is really, that's what's most memorable for me. Like the, the moments of, of that, that interaction, that that magic that happens on the stage between between um, the musician and the fan, if you will. Okay. I mean, we just play music, man. You know, it's like it's just kind of like you're doing this interview, and it's kind of we don't look at it. Um, we don't we don't look at it as it's kind of this separate thing. It's definitely a symbiotic thing. We've all during this interview kind of mentioned that kind of connection between fan and audience, you know, fan and band. Um, and so the, the, the magic is, is, you know, as artists, we're, we're here kind of sharing uh, a, piece, a piece of our soul, you know, a, a piece of vulnerability, uh, a piece of, you know, something that we've been working on, almost all of us on this phone call our entire lives that we've, you know, put every sweat, tear, everything into something that means a lot to us. So you know, I think that, that one of the most memorable things that happens is when someone comes up and, and shares their experience of how you have touched them, how you've maybe, you know, changed the trajectory of their life on planet Earth in this third dimensional reality because of the music that, that, we, that we create together. So, you know, it's beyond, it's beyond me, it's beyond Hunter, it's beyond Alana, it's beyond Phipps, it's beyond Jeffrey. It's us as a collective, and that collective is the sound tribe. So us being together and playing music together and this synergy that that, that that creates and how that touches an individual and as well the fans and the collective out there, that's, that's, that's the magic. And that's why we keep doing what we keep doing. All right. I love that answer. That, well the connection between all of us is just beautiful. Um, and speaking somewhat of connections, is there, like, it, what is, uh, you, you have a unique perspective on the crowd a bit, um, being on the other side where most of us have, will be watching you guys, you are watching us. Uh, is there any experience you remember watching just like a one fan that you saw in the crowd or just anything that just like, just was the most memorable for you? Or I, again, I we've heard, there's probably thousands of them, but I'd love to just see if there's one that just stuck in your mind. Well, for me, I mean, if I can look in the crowd and I see my mom, mm -hmm. I mean, when I see my mom in the crowd and she's just smiling at me, I mean, you know, I have a daughter, so it's, you know, in that way, you know, until you have that experience and to, I know what it is for her and it's just like me doing my thing. So for me, it's my mom and seeing my daughter and seeing my wife and just seeing that beyond, beyond anything. That's just for me though. It's like, I love seeing the fans and like connecting and just and that magic in them, just like they're kind of blown away. But when I connect with um, my family, it's in my dad, you know, it's just kind of like, Oh man, this is, this is really real. So for me, that that's what I would particularly have to say after I said what I said about the fans. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, speaking of being on stage or performing, is there one song that you, you guys love to just uh, bring out to see the crowd reaction or just love to play personally as your favorites to play out there? Whatever song we're playing. All right. I mean, I, I don't mean to... Uh keep denying your your request for favorites or most influential kind of things but i think that's that's really um the entire experience and yeah it really is it's the energy we put in, in into being as present as we can in that moment and so um 
that would be my absolute. No, opinion. yeah, I agree, Jeffrey. I, I would just say that, like, um, I, I agree with him a hundred percent. But I think I think one thing that would would is that you know we have we have a lot of songs are you know our our set lists uh, are are consistently you know changing. That is the one kind of constant that you can. <laughs> that you can rely on with STS-9 is that, you know, the set list changed. So if you saw us one night, you're not gonna see anything that you saw the next night, that you saw the first night or the third night or whatever. We just kind of keeps, you know, we keep it interesting for ourselves, for our fans. Um, our fans, you know, they definitely chase songs. Um, we have a hundred, we have 200 songs that we kind of use as a database to kind of keep that interesting. But for me, it's like when we haven't maybe played a song in like 12 years or, or, or a long time, it's been a long time that it's been in rotation and we kind of bring it back to life to kind of like start playing that song and kind of look out into the crowd. And for those people that, you know, know what's actually happening, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to kind of just look and just know that those people know. And that's a pretty cool, pretty cool feeling, I would say. Okay. Or if it's a new song. Mm -hmm. And they're feeling the new song. I mean, I mean, I I can sorry to I'm not trying to hijack this, but I remember and, and we all talked about it backstage, but I remember being in Atlanta when we did the East of the Sun uh, run at the Eastern, which was in June, and, and we kind of debuted kind of a new song and afterwards, you know, rarely do you kind of debut a new song and then they've never heard it and you have just, you know, the crowd kind of going bananas like this is and you and I think all of us felt it and recognized it and we got backstage and we were like okay we got to record that that's definitely going on the album just because of the response um it was it was undeniable okay um I like these answers you guys really think hard uh hard about your stuff and I love that like really really do um if there is one big piece of advice you could give a fan uh, whether it's a fan looking to be a musician themselves or just in their own careers and their lives or anything, what is that one piece of advice you guys would give? Uh, for me, um, uh, you know, and I think if, if everybody wants to, uh, you know, for me, it's just not to have an expectation. Mm -hmm. um, when you come to an STS-9 show, um, personally, I, I think that it's just, just to kind of, if, if you're going to have an expectation, you might be let down, but if you come and just and want to have and the, the experience, I think that that is, I think that that's really what it's all about. You know, expectation that it's going to do this, or it's going to be like this or whatever, that there's this opportunity to kind of be overjoyed or let down. But if you come just with an open mind, just to have, you know, this experience, I think that it, it I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and stoked. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, what was the first festival any of you all went to and how do you think it impacted you guys? Ooh, that's a rough one. Oh, what was the first festival? Okay. We'll throw this out there. Ozfest, I think, was the first festival that I ever went to. Nice. It was pretty oh, weird. Yeah. Shit. And that was pretty nice. life changing because it was like Primus and uh, it was just a really, really cool uh, lineup that particular year. And it was like the original Black Sabbath. And uh, I actually, <laughs> I was, uh, I, I went and I somehow I snuck backstage. I don't know how I did it. I, I really don't even, I, I could never do it now. I think it's just because I was young, didn't care. And uh, like was standing side stage watching Black Sabbath until somebody noticed I was there. I was like, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing here? But that was my first festival. It was amazing. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love yeah, my first festival was Lollapalooza. All right. Yeah, which was, you know, back in the uh, the mid 90s, um, seeing what was it like Susie and the Banshees, Jane's Addiction, uh, Nine Inch Nails. Um, that shit was crazy. It definitely changed my life. Because I played drums at that time. So it was just, 
that's what I wanted to do. So it definitely secured, <laughs> secured, uh, the, still the desire to do that and want to do that. Yeah. My, my first festival inspired me the same way. Um, it's called the world drum summit it happened on the Hopi reservation and it was a drum circle led by Baba Olatunje in, I think, 60 countries simultaneously. It was supposed to be the biggest um, drum festival. And I took a Greyhound bus from Asheville, North Carolina to there and definitely changed my life and inspired me in, in ways that still touch me today. All right. And uh, what was the first album any of you all bought? And how old were you when you bought that album? And yeah. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll bite on that one. Let's see, I think I was <laughs> maybe, maybe I was four, maybe I was three. Toto, four, it's my first album. And I used to play it on my Fisher-Price record player. <laughs> Mine was, I'll never forget it, was uh, Michael Jackson Thriller when I was 12 years old. And uh, my dad had quite an extensive vinyl collection, but that was the first one I bought. I remember going to the record store and waiting and hoping I'd get my copy. And Wow. Mind blown. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, Thriller was one of my first ones for sure. Um, and there was a couple others, and one that I just remember since Jeffrey talks about that was um, R.E.M. Green. You know, I just remember that being one of the first, like, albums I got. That's like, I was, like, in the fan club, and I got, like, all the stuff in the mail. I was, like, a little kid. I went, yeah, I was, like, obsessed with R.E.M. when I was, like, just 10 years old. Man, going to buy records when we were younger was like, it was a thing. It was an experience. It was like something that you looked forward to being able to do. So it's it's something that we as a group are really like, we love albums. We love records um, of all kinds, of all genres. So I know like all of us have a really deep connection and memories to like, you know, waiting for an album to come out or, you know, uh, my first CD that I ever got was George Michael Faith because that was like, CDs had just yeah. come out, you know, it was like, you know, like, whoa, it's CDs. So yeah, it was that's so, just something that we love. So different. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. We used to stand in line. There was a, it was a record store in the South in Atlanta. It was called Turtles. And it was just like the way that it worked was just so different. It wasn't just, you know, there's only a certain amount. And it was like almost out of like scarcity that you got to kind of go and wait and get it. You know, mine was, uh, I think, you 2 Joshua Tree. That was like one of the first ones that I do remember. Um, but yeah, same with me, actually, Hunter. I love fucking REM. We've talked about this, but I was, I was oh, for sure. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. All right. And what about the first concert you all attended? And who did you go see? <laughs> mine, was Will mine was Willie Nelson. Because <laughs> my, my dad was like probably two years old. <laughs> oh my god i can't believe i'm gonna answer this question uh, i was a junior in high school and i went and saw night ranger and cheap trick that was yes. my first that was my first concert holy shit Woo. i was james taylor don't uh, must i don't know if i was 13 or somewhere around there james taylor I can't, I can't remember. I think my, I had an older brother, so I don't remember my, my brother got to take me to a couple of shows that I went to. Um, I saw this band back in the day that I, the, the first thing that I remember was, was this band called, it literally was called everything. Um, I was young. My brother wasn't that old and I'm not, you know, so it was like, he, he got to bring me to it. It was a, it was at the masquerade music park it was the outside place hunter. And it was everything and like some other, like, I think it was everything and soul coughing or something. Nice. Um, yeah. And I got to, my, it was like the little brother got to tag along. It was pretty cool. 
I felt kind of cool too to do it. <laughs> That's awesome. The first one I went to, like unchaperoned, I think was um, uh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Right. Which I'll never forget. Awesome. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. Well, is there anything else you would like to say to our audience uh, today? Definitely would love to plug Bandcamp. It's a, a, a way for people to uh, really take a deep look at the band. And we have some really special shares up there, um, music that can't necessarily be listened to in other places. And um, it's kind of our big share as a band. So please check out Bandcamp, SDS9. Okay. We'll definitely. Yeah, if you want to really get an idea of what we do, Bandcamp is the way you can. We we release all our shows on there, so we'll play, you know, one night and the next day the the recording is up there. So it's it's a really great great way to check it out. If you're going to a festival and you see us on the schedule, you know, you you can. There's many ways to to check us out, but that's going to be the best one. Well, I want to thank you for the time today. Uh, we would like to, we everyone at Festival Voice would like to thank you for taking your time today to talk to us and for us to get to know you a little better. Uh, and to our audience, our loyal Festival Voice audience, uh, thank you for allowing us to be your voice in festivals across the world. Uh, neither STS9 nor the Festival Voice would be anywhere without your support. Thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, stay tuned for exclusive interviews and content brought to you by Festival Voice. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thanks for having us.